Are music education and music theory racist and or sexist? Well, in this video, I'm just gonna share a couple quick ideas um, that might change how you think about it. Uh, now, the way that I opened the video is kind of shocking, but maybe we can express it a different way. So another way to say is music theory or music education sexist is just to say, is it gendered? Do we gender music? And one way to think about that is like for jazz musicians, think about the type of terminology that a lot of times people use, like he just played a killing solo or that's burning, right? These are, or shredding that guitar player shredded. Like, so we put a lot of value on these, like almost these like masculine, I guess, terms that have been thought of as masculine. They're, they're actually kind of destructive <laughs> terms, right? You know, burning, shredding, killing. These, these really, these really, uh, <laughs> they're kind of, they're kind of violent terms actually, right? Which there's more to that in being masculine. But this is just an example of how we, we gender music and we also gender <clears throat> musicianship, which means that in other words, that we might put more value on the ability to play fast, the ability to play hard, the ability to play loud, and to kind of, that the, these, are, these are values that maybe have been put out there uh, by men and for men, right? Nothing wrong with playing killing or burning or shredding, but just saying that's an example of how musicianship and music could be considered to be gendered. And I'm not going super deep or scholarly into this, but I'm just kind of explaining it. And the way, the way I understand it is that we kind of gender the world around us. Like in lots of ways, we, we gender the earth, right? We say, you know, mother earth. And um, so even Latin languages assign genders to different things. So not only do we assign gender, like we make up what gender something is for different things in the world, but then we also relate to those things in a certain way. You know, so the idea of, of um, exploiting the earth, exploiting the earth could be thought of as like some kind of parallel of, I don't know, exploiting, subjugating women or something like this. Now, again, I'm not going into a scholarly thing, but I just want to draw, I just want to kind of raise the issue. Is musicianship, is music theory, the way we practice, the values that we place on, on music, do these reflect kind of these, these gender biases that we all are systemically a part of? I guess that's the question. And so one way that, that I've often made the parallel or thought of the parallel of, of gender roles in, in music is like the idea of caretaking, like being a musician in a supportive role in an ensemble. So the idea of accompanying or supporting people musically, <clears throat> this can, this, this idea of caretaking, if we think that caretaking is something we assign a gender to, then it's something that we maybe potentially as a man, I might've been grown up, I might've grown up to, to not think that I wanted to do that, that I might've thought, no, I don't want to be a caretaker. I want to be out there, quote unquote, doing thing, taking, taking action, being a star, being a provider, right? These are very gendered roles. So in a musical situation, um, I might've always thought like, well, I just want to play melodies. I just want to play fast and loud, <laughs> shredding, burning, killing melodies. And kind of, you know, that that's like, the, that's the role that I assign the most value to versus the role of caretaking, like just keeping the beat, accompanying, like marking the chord progression. 
Now, it's, it so happens <laughs> that a lot of the things that I teach to classical musicians is about instead of always playing the melody, like learn to be an accompanist, learn to be a functional musician, like take responsibility for the chord progression, take responsibility for the groove. Okay, so that's just very quickly exploring this concept of, of, of gender. So what if we apply it now to race? The same, the same concept. Do we have kind of <clears throat> racial biases? And, and, I, and as I understand this term, critical race theory, um, it basically, basic, critical race theory basically um, examines the idea <clears throat> that our systems of thought and our institutions <clears throat> were created for white people by white people. Right, and that they sort of reflect these biases. So if we look at this in terms of music, you know, does European music put certain, value certain things above other things? So for example, complexity, the rule of reason, the primacy of reason, that's a very European idea, right? Philosophical idea, enlightenment, and all this kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of times if we think, um, well, a work by Mahler is complex, intellectual, you know, organized, then we might, then people might be tempted to say that this is a higher form of music. Um, <clears throat> If we're, yeah, a lot of times um, European music, the focus is on specifically on harmony and harmonic complexity. Um, and so we might tend to value, oh, and also uh, long forms, a symphonic form, sonata form. These are just examples. Whereas <clears throat> if we look at black American music, one might say that there's a more of an emphasis on groove. Um, you might hear black musicians talk about the importance of how does the music feel? How does the music feel? That's not necessarily terminology that I heard in classical music growing up. So, so I, I guess I'm drawing a blank a little bit. <laughs> but I guess what I would say is that if we, if we just start to think about how this affects us, you know, gendering, um, music and, uh, looking at music and musicianship, music theory through the lens of critical race theory, um, I'd be curious to know what it opens up for you. I think for a lot of music teachers and a lot of musicians, if we've grown up thinking about music in a specific way, if we were taught to value certain things, then certainly there is a psychological comfort with continuing to think about music the way we think about it. And going out of that comfort zone is going to be hard. And Maybe especially for some of us, if it means we are going into communities, other communities of musicians and learning from other communities of musicians, that could feel lonely. It could feel threatening. It could feel, you know, it could really bring out our insecurities. <clears throat> so if we want to expand as musicians, if we, and even as humans, and, and open ourselves up to new ways of expressing ourselves and bringing our attention to different skills, perspectives, focuses, even within ourselves as musicians and as people. I guess I'm just acknowledging that for myself, like that's a scary thing. That's an uncomfortable thing sometimes. So yeah, like I said, I'd love to know what you think about this, if this opens up anything for you as far as these ideas, because especially I think the idea of 
critical race theory is being thrown around in the US um, and I think in some ways really being misrepresented, I think it's worth examining. It's definitely worth examining and understanding how it affects not only our, um, our language, our laws, um, but also music, music. Cool. All right, see you.